Hey everybody, I'm Amy. I'm Dan. And we are the Hustle Couple coming at you today with the daily grind on a What's Up With That Wednesday. Seriously. Whoa. Whoa, what is up with that? Man, this has been a weird, it's weird. Stuff's weird. Yeah, but you know what? We're here, we're gonna get this video done, and then uh, we'll be listing tonight as well. 7.30. Yes. Central time. It was great last night. We it had a really the best. good, yeah, best one so far. So come join us over there, and let us know in the comments below if you would like a Friday late list on the YouTubes. That's right. Because we noticed a lot of people were joining around 9.30 our time. And yeah, so right maybe. as we were finishing up, it was like a bunch of people were signing on, and I'm sorry, you didn't mean to, to disappoint. All, All right. right, today we're continuing Fabier Fabric February. Yes! I love a little segment, you know, I love it. <laughs> the silk. We oh had boy. to just like hold the presses yeah. because there is so much interesting information about silk. Your, your mind is going to be blown. Even if you don't sell clothing, you need to know this stuff. Yeah, it's insanely Amazing. interesting. Yeah. Okay, so Dan's gonna start with the science stuff because silk comes from worms and he's gonna tell you all about that. And then I'm gonna tell you the mind-blowing thing about the actual silk fiber. Right, okay. So believe it or not, the Chinese originally developed sink, sink, silk. <laughs> Sorry. Silk, I don't know what I'm saying. Way, way, way back in, in the day. 2640 BC. Stop. What? 2640 BC is when the Chinese discovered silk. That's insane. Right? That's Let insane. Think think about how many years. I mean, that's like. Mm -hmm. That's like 5,000 something years ago. Okay. I got my brain. I got my <laughs> okay, brain. Everybody okay, on, everybody on board? Okay. Legend has it that an empress, Chinese empress, dropped a silk moth cocoon. She was just holding it, okay. Just uh, Makes holding sense. it, moving it, whatever. No, okay. Dropped it into hot water, and it unraveled. And she was like, oh, this is so beautiful. I'm gonna make a dress. That's exactly right. So beautiful. Mm -hmm. Who thinks, like, even if it unraveled, you would be like, ew. I know, right? But then she was like, hmm. Mm, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I can make a dress. <laughs> right, okay. she was like the, the meme with the lady. He was like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, that's crazy. It is. You know what's even crazier than that? Mm. The Chinese kept it to themselves, or I'm going to say they kept it to themselves. It, silk wasn't introduced to the West until 522 AD. What? So 3,000 years after it was originally discovered, that's when the West picked it up and was like, hey, this is... What is this? <laughs> so when I think of like silk, I do think of China and Chinese mm -hmm. silk and everything like that. Actually, yes. China silk is a different thing. Don't get that confused. We'll get there. Um, I think of it like Renaissance, Italian dresses, right. Spanish princess. I think of all my historical dramas that I love. Well, the reason you think that is because, again, this I don't know if this is actual fact or lore, but they say there's there was two monks that smuggled... Uh, silk moth eggs <laughs> out of China to uh, Constantinople, which is nowadays Istanbul. Someone lied on their customs form. Exactly right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so these so, like these sneaky monks. Yes, sneaky monks <laughs> brought the silk moth eggs to Constantinople. When was that? In uh, five hundred something. In, in five around five twenty two. So this is yeah. right after Rome. This is right when Rome is collapsing. Right. The Roman Empire, and that's leading into medieval times, which is where I think of silk. Yes. Ah. So, so the discovery or the introduction of silk to the West, whatever you want to call it, that spurred the silk trade. Ah, yes. Okay. The silk Road. All the, okay. Yeah, I'm all with you. of that yeah, stuff. I'm right. 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 And then all of the. All the money that was made from the silk trade, because obviously, you know, once commerce starts, totally. money starts being made. All of that money and all of those finances are what directly led to the Renaissance. A rebirth from a silkworm. Yep. From crazy, the right? That's crazy. Crazy, right? Okay. So silk okay. is very old. Very. Yes. All right. 
Silk ex exists <laughs> against all odds. Like, yeah. actually, once you figure out what silk actually is, you cannot believe that someone fi figured out how to harvest this into cloth. Yeah, for real. It's insane. It is. Okay. Okay. Let's keep it going. Okay, so how the process works, right? The process starts with a silk moth. Okay. Okay? And this moth lays hundreds of tiny little eggs that are about the size of a pinhead. I can see that. Yes. Okay. okay. Then they, I guess whoever is making the silk. A person. A person. They harvest all of the eggs. Okay? And then they're separated into two groups. Uh, I'm sorry. First, they... They pull out all the diseased eggs. So they're looking at these things the size of a pin, and yeah. a person is going in and picking, hand picking out bad ones. Yeah, I don't know how they do that, but they do. Got it. <laughs> so the bad ones go away, good ones okay. over here. Okay. Then from the good ones, they separate those into two groups. Okay, you have one group that they keep for reproduction. Sure. To make new moths. Sure. <laughs> and then they take some for um, to make uh, cocoons which are going to be harvested for the silk fiber. So these little thing, think about back, big hungry caterpillar, think about back there. Yeah. So these little larvae are gonna hatch into caterpillars, which then are gonna go into a cocoon to make a moth, right? Right. Okay, I'm just keeping up but with you. But there's even, there's even more craziness to this whole process. Okay. Okay. Um, apparently, silkworms eat mulberry leaves. A who? Mul from the mulberry tree. <laughs> okay. I don't know. So, this is, it gets, it's, it's, it's insane, okay? So they take, they put these eggs, right? Once they've got the eggs separated, they put them into cold storage for six to 10 months, okay? okay. I, I saw pictures of this. It's on, in, on like little cardboard stacks and uh -huh. they're in little pods. Yeah, super okay. interesting. And then while, while they're in cold storage, uh -huh. they're waiting for these mulberry trees that they've just planted to mature and to bud. Okay. 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 Got it. And then once the mulberry trees start to bud, they take the eggs out of cold storage and incubate them and hatch them into larva. Uh huh. Then those larva start eating the, they're apparently they're extremely picky. They will only eat clean and dry mulberry leaves. Okay. That, that are the same age as themselves. Stop. No, seriously. <laughs> so, like, silk it, on its own is an impossibility. Like, how the conditions have to be absolutely perfect. They have to be perfect because if, if like, if the silkworm doesn't jive with the mulberry leaf, <laughs> if it's not exactly the same age, it's like mo mojo. I know, right? It won't eat it, and the quality of the silk that it produces will either be not as good or it won't produce any silk at all. So, extraordinarily. Temperamental is what okay. I would call these things. All right. Okay? All right, it gets wackier. Ready? What's up with that? So these caterpillars grow to be three to four inches long. and As they're munching on the leaves. Right, they're called silkworms at this point. Okay? Okay. They shed their skin about four times. And sure. once they're fully grown, they will um, spin a, start to spin a cocoon and uh, to, to transform into a moth. Okay. okay, this is where, this is where it gets really interesting. So we've been discussing silk all morning yeah. before this video, and <laughs> we can't figure out another way to do this other than for me reading it straight from the book. Yeah, because, because it's it's so. I have this book called All About Silk, and yep. let me just tell you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ready? Yes. Go. The cocoon is really an oval shell or casing about an inch long. The silkworm extrudes a syrupy fluid from two silk glands in its head. The fluid instantly hardens into two silk filaments called brin, which are held together by a sticky substance called saracen, secreted from another set of glands. Okay. The double filament forms a single strand called bave. The silkworm moves its head from side to side in a figure eight. Can you demonstrate? Thank you. Crossing the strand to build layer <laughs> after layer of the cocoon from the outside in. Uh -huh. It spins continuously for 24 to 72 hours, shrinking in size as it goes until the cocoon is done. Okay. 
If nature were allowed to take its course, a soft, fuzzy, cream-colored moth would break out of the cocoon in about 12 days by emitting a liquid to dissolve a hole in the silk. Unfortunately for the new moth, <laughs> silk is more valuable when the long filament is not broken. Obviously. Makes sense. Okay. Okay. Think about how long this is. Okay. okay. Just wait. Just wait. Yeah. <laughs> the finished cocoon is baked, steamed, gassed, or refrigerated to stifle the poor moth and prevent it from damaging the silk. So we just like kill the moth. Mm -hmm. Here, here. Here it comes. Stop what you're doing. <laughs> Listen. A single unbroken cocoon yields from 1,600 feet to more than a mile of continuous filament. I'm sorry, what? A mile. A mile of continuous filament? From one worm. From one one-inch cocoon? Yes, a mile. That's how fine a silk <laughs> fiber is. Because think about it, one little caterpillar is a one-inch one yeah. cocoon for a mile. That's how thin that is and fine. insane. And the fact that it has to go through all... First of all, the fact that anyone figured this out ever... Yeah, right. ...is a miracle. <laughs> Second of all, I mean, matching worms to mulberry to filaments to killing the moth inside to stretching those filaments out to then putting them together with other filaments to make, to make a, a yarn. garment. Yeah. Insane. And I'm just over here like, here's my Eileen Fisher silk top, y'all. Hey. <laughs> These... It, it gives you a little bit of newfound appreciation. For sure. Yeah. And I think we will go over how to launder silk and everything like that, but it is a very hardy fiber that is... It's spectacular in what it can do. And yeah. I just think it's so magical. And even if you have no care in the world about fabric ever in your life, I still think it's so interesting. I, I would agree with that. I mean, as she was reading this to me this morning, I, my jaw was on the floor. I was like, what? what? <laughs> and we never think about it. We can wear silk shirts all the time. Right. Or there's even silk in some plush. And we're just like, eh, it's silk. Eh, whatever. It's a marvel. It really is. It really is. <laughs> okay, you know what else is a marvel? We What's that? have to go ship all of our stuff from today. We don't have a lot to ship, but it was small but mighty. Yes. And then we've got to go run around town. So it's another quick day. Yep. And I'm hoping that you can learn a lot in a little bit of time and join us this evening. Yeah, and uh, knock on wood, hopefully everything works out according to schedule and we'll be back in time for the live tonight. Mojo's, Mojo's down here. complaining over here. All right. Let's go ship it. Let's go do it. Action! All right. We're cleaning this old dirty phone before we pack it up and ship it to the buyer. This is so dirty, Tess. Oh. But they only paid $10 for it. I kept kicking it in our storage. <laughs> I'm ready yeah. for it to go. It doesn't work. If right. it worked, I think this might be a prop. Yeah, it could be. We sold it for parts. It's a General Electric. I'm just happy to get it out of here and it doesn't end up in the landfill as I always. Read with that. But I mean, even at $10, this thing was fun and nasty. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I'm just going to wipe it down a little bit. Okay. All right, this is going to, so you need to find a box. This is going to Michigan. Oh, no. Oh. Wait, they didn't pay for this yet. I'm stupid. That's not paid for yet? It's not on this list. Well, then, cool. Yeah, it's not paid for yet. No, I could have sworn I got wasting a, our time. I could have swore I got a notification. Stop trying to <laughs> No. No. No, because you'll just keep on cleaning it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here's the, um, I think this is the ticket. You would just this is a tie. I'm cleaning it. 1702. Let me grab that. All right, I'm gonna start getting this thing ready. Okay, this is a chambray shirt from BDG. Shirt. Skirt, skirt, not shirt, skirt, excuse me. Uh, chambray skirt with the buttons on the front. Let me see about getting this tag here for everybody to see. There we go. Okay. Oh my god, that thing sold? Yes. <laughs> Amazing. All right. It sold just in time for Fabric February. So I'm packing up this fabric. Okay, here. so this sold for $7.50. Not even gonna lie. I'm happy to see it go. It was mine. So we don't have any money into it. Cool. 
and um, BDG is just an Urban Outfitters house brand, I believe. So okay, but Urban Outfitters is kind of making a comeback. You said it is right? making a comeback, but at seven fifty, I wouldn't necessarily. <laughs> don't, I wouldn't call that a comeback. Don't call it a comeback. Uh, I don't mind. I'm just saying, you know, some people are having really slow sales right now, so when offers are coming, I'm taking them. Yeah. If you want to send me an offer, I'll see. <laughs> Again. Okay. This guy. Where's that thing? Oh, six ounces. Mm -hmm. Six Sorry. ounces. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, I need a. I need a writing. Okay, here we go. Six ounces. Okay. Right. Skinny tie. Skinny tie. This thing is so skinny. This is from the Herringbone brand. Don't know, but I can tell you that it has a Herringbone print. <laughs> Just in time for our fabric lessons. Herringbone, J, JB Herringbone. No and can, idea. And you can see these little Herringbones right here in this geometric print. It's a very skinny tie. Skinniest. So with ties, you want to put this measurement right here, the widest point. People care. Yeah. And they care about the length. Dan's gonna wrap this up because he loves wrapping a tie. Uh, it's just, you know. I haven't figured, this is the best way I figured out how to ship them and keep yeah. them from getting creased and stuff. Yeah, I so. He's just rolling it up in some tissue paper. Yep. Oh, you are way out of focus. My oh, bad, no. people. My bad, my bad. We missed it all. It was out of focus. Sorry. Yeah, at least we fixed it this time, though. I'm trying. We need new phones. Yeah. All right. Here he goes with the tape gun. Everybody's favorite. <laughs> the internet has spoken. They love it when you use the tape gun. That's true. You guys can see that our rack back here that was empty is full again. Yeah, <laughs> so... Uh, we did go back to the store today. We're still on the Brioni hunt. We found a Brunello Cuccinelli yes. today. And we found a bunch of Zania pants. So this guy's wardrobe is coming through. Yeah. It's just slowly. They've got it all in the back. We just got to wait for them to bring it all out. Yep. That's a hot tip right hot there. Hot tip. The phrase is trademarked. Hustle Club Link. Oh my God. <laughs> it's a thing now. I just got to keep. I, I, just gotta I keep can't doing. handle it. <laughs> All right. All right. Next up. This we just listed live last week. This is the Kasik, or maybe two nights ago. I don't know when. Kasik new tags. We got it at the bins. This is a bralette. Kasik is that Lane Bryant brand I mentioned quite a bit. Mm -hmm. We sell a lot of it. Here's the label, and yeah, if you can find it, it does flip. Not for a lot. Thank you. How much did this sell for? Uh, this sold for eighteen dollars. So new with tags sold for eighteen. So it doesn't sell for a lot, but look, it was a conversion and it was quick. Super fast. We paid forty nine cents for it at the bins. And um, so yeah, we're making some money on that. I'm happy. And we have a kind of a interesting sale next. We have to combine the shipping so we can walk you through that. Because eBay doesn't really have a bundle feature yet. And I was listening to Chris at Daily Refinement and Tech and Sports' podcast yesterday. And they were talking about how eBay has no real way or no plans of developing a way to buy multiple items from a store. You just, you're kind of on your own to work it out. Right. So we're going to work it out. So we've got two pairs of our... Eskandar pants. These sold for. Bless you. Ooh. They're going to Missouri. Okay, so the first thing I would like to tell you is that they sold for $100 each. Are they worth more than that? Absolutely. Yes. But we are not a storage unit and yeah. we paid $3 for them. So $100 each and a repeat buyer potentially worth it. Mm hmm. These have been listed a while, maybe a couple of months at this point. So I'm happy to take... It's hard to sell these pants because they don't look good when you take a picture of them. True that. Here's the tag. These pants are about $1,500 retail. If you're new here, we found a bunch of these. Uh, and these aren't new Eskindar, okay? These are like from 
1995 or something, right? So we can't expect a million trillion dollars. <clears throat> we had them listed at 150. Mm -hmm. And an offer for two came in at 100. And I am... All about that. I'm all about that life. <laughs> I'm all about turning $3 into $100. You know, it has these like little slubs on it, but I think that's part of it. I do too, yeah. Okay, so the first pair, these navy blue pair are cotton. They're a Supima cotton, wide leg, elastic waist pants. So, since you know about fabric now, these are not as valuable as some of the other fabrics that we have these pants in. We've got cashmere, we've got silk blends. Mm -hmm. The other pair here is a linen blend made in say, England. It looks like it looks like linen. Right, and these are a linen weave. So th this color, these also are not the most valuable that we have. Linen comes from a plant you can shave down. It's not that valuable. Right. So a hundred bucks for these. I'm like, take it. Here, let me wrap these in some tissue and then put them in this regional box. But if you saw that I was just showing you the elastic waist on them. Um, you could miss them at the thrift store. In fact, today I was looking at jeans and I went and looked at all the elastic waist. A lot of them were Alfred Dunner and those kind of brands, but I, I just checked them. I never would have checked them before. Yeah, that's... I kind of call them like old lady pants. <laughs> I don't mean that in a derogatory way. Hopefully it didn't come across that way. But you know what I mean? Like my grandma wears these kind of pants. Comfort. I mean, hey, I should wear these kind of pants. Right. Uh, they look like that hanging on the rack until you feel them. When you feel them, you will know the difference between those and the Alfred Dunners immediately. Yeah. Okay. You do me a favor. Mm -hmm. Grab this stack. Mm -hmm. Get that out of here. Uh-oh. Straggler. Uh-oh. Again, with this packaging, we are kind of going a little above and beyond, but again, that's because she bought two pairs of pants for $100 a piece. And the shipping is actually, it's pretty cheap. So we are gonna probably, I'm probably gonna send her a small refund on the shipping because she did pay $18 for shipping. Yeah, and I think that's even nice to do in case she wants to come back. She'll yeah. trust us. Yeah. We're not trying to take her money unnecessarily. Hopefully okay. she likes them. She said she's never worn these kind of pants before. She, we had a lot of back and forth with her. Yeah. Customer service. All right, this is uh, regional A. And I already checked the price and it's, besides a padded flat rate, it's the cheapest way to go. Yeah, and they need to go in a box. There you go. Okay, and here's yours. Thank you. So very small shipments today. We do have a lot that we sold have not paid yet. So that's all we got today. It's good though. At least we got some going out. That's for sure. And yesterday we had 12. Today we have four. You just never know. Well, five, you know. I guess that counts as five. Okay, you do not need to go. Okay. Confirmed. And then today, after this, hopefully we have some time. I think we have enough time. I'm gonna show you all the junk bags I bought. I'm a little embarrassed. It's kind of a lot. All right, here is the car seat. Sorry. Is there a little paper towel? Or scratch or something can give me from right there. What? Thank you. What is this? The Cassie. No. First one I gave you? I already did that one. Okay, that's the regional A. And you have to do that on eBay to say that it's in one package, right? What, combine it? Yeah. Yeah, when you're, if you use the bulk uh, shipping label tool, if you have orders that are, um, that can be combined by buyer, it'll tell you at the very top of the screen. And there's just a little link that you click there. Okay, this is the BDG.
Quick ship today. Quick shipping. All right. Love it. So you're gonna go check in with Mojo. Yes. He's gonna go to the post office. You're yes. gonna come back here to see what we made and check out my junk bag haul. Uh oh, so junk exciting. bag haul. Bonus. It's Wednesday's moment with Mojo. <laughs> hey, buddy. I gotta go to the post office. Say bye to the people. No? Okay, bye. All right, you guys, I am back from the post office. All the packages are dropped off and scanned, so we get to find out what we really made. Go. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. J.B. Herringbone. Oh. Okay. So All I right, guys, yeah, just so everybody knows, this is Vendu that we use for our inventory management, uh, analytics, cross-listing, all that good stuff. 9.95. Someone asked in a comment how we keep track of our inventory. We make these tickets and the cost is here. This is what we paid for each item. Yep. Uh, we make these tickets and attach them to every single item. And you can look back on our what soul, I mean our, what do you call these videos? Daily grinds. Daily grinds and uh, see how we use our receipt system. Oh my gosh, are you guys getting spam calls like crazy? Okay, marketplace fees, I need to concentrate. Marketplace fees was 153, and the shipping we paid on this side was 348, so not a huge profit here. Again, 391, but it was a conversion. Same with this next one, BDG. Hmm. I thought, oh, Maybe type in sh okay. I got, I got it. It's not my first rodeo, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm not saying it was. Alright. We sold this for $12.49 with shipping, so that's good. The cost of the item was free, and the marketplace fees, the sold promoted. So I write $188 plus $0.08 cents equals $196. Okay. $196, and the shipping we paid was $3.99. Seems like a lot. $6.54 we made on that, and it's out of our house. Bye. Phone is blowing up. It must yeah. be political or something. I don't know. Okay. Eskin. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mm. Eskandar. Now I gotta put pants. There's, we have a lot of this stuff listed, so I gotta find the right one. Three, seven, eight, four. Three. I think it's these. No. I think it was, those. Yeah. Think it was yeah. They didn't have a, yeah, I got a little confused. Okay. Mark has sold. So I took, minus the shipping re refund, we're refunding her $8.99 in shipping. I took all that and I divided it in two and then I subtracted that. <laughs> anyway, sale price $104.49. Okay. And then the cost of the item was three oh eight dollars for us and the marketplace fees were $13.05 on this pair. Shipping was four thirty one. Again, divided the shipping in half. Right. So we made eighty four oh five on those. It should be what exactly the same on the other pair, right? Yep, it is exactly the same. Perfect. Except that one, this one sold promoted. Ah, interesting. So three eight seven one. Just making sure I have the right ones selected here. Marcus sold. I do need to cross list these the trades. See all of you yelling at your computer right now. <laughs> I do. I'm gonna do that. Maybe while you're gone, I'll do that. Marketplace okay. fees, 1405. And 1405. So this was a dollar extra in marketplace fees because it sold. Promoted. Promoted. Yep. <clears throat> so 8305. Alright. As expected. And what did we make today? Let's see. <clears throat> Let's see. Oof. Four Oof. items sold, but our profit's 177.55. Yeah, almost 200 on the four things, so that's not bad. Not bad. Let's see how we're doing for the month. Okay. Creeping up on three grand. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> Creeping up. It's still, I mean, look, we're up 52% from last year at the wow. same time. Wow. I mean, from last month. From yep. last month. Yeah. Wow. The so first two weeks of, yeah, same time yeah. from last month. Let's look wow. at year to date. We've made $8,000 profit already this year. That's really great. And compared to last year, wow. we had 212 sold and we're at 353. Wow. We have sold 353 items 
so in far six this weeks. year. That's in crazy. Six weeks. What? Yep. Is that right? It looks like looks like it's right to me. <laughs> that seems so crazy to me in six weeks. Yeah. Almost been, fourteen thousand in sales. We've been busy. So we're up sixty seven percent from last year. That's amazing. It's fantastic. Yes. That's a bunch of junk bags. It's a bunch of junk bags. I was super excited. It was half off day and they had just restocked. This is mostly plush, but I'm going to tell you why I picked each one. And then you can watch the weeks to come to see if they sell. Okay. Because I did, there was probably a hundred junk bags and these are the ones I bought. I didn't buy them all. Right. Okay. Normally I don't buy anything with like Chick-fil-A or something like that in it. Cause like, mm. but there is a Rick and Morty Ooh. something green in here. And I saw this tag. Yeah, it's a green Morty. I don't know what any of that means, but you <laughs> tell me to buy Rick and Morty, so I bought it. Nice. I it does have a... Of them. a yeah, there's, yeah, there's two of them in there. Oh, yeah, there's two of them. Yep. Quantity two listing, love that. We have sold these little soul... I don't know where they came from, but we. I find these a lot... I find them a lot, so maybe they're in a Happy Meal or something, but they do sell. Okay. So I'll definitely list most of this stuff in here, not the Chick-fil-A thing, but yep. most of the stuff. Okay. Uh, I bought this one because it has this little nerdy Smurf. Yeah. I love that. It had a Minecraft, yep. and we do really well with these. Mm -hmm. And it has a pink Y2K oh, Victoria's cool. Secret pink dog. Okay. So I thought, you know, and hopefully there's something in here that's, like, magical that I don't see on the outside. Because you're not allowed to open these at all. If they have any rips in them, our thrift will not sell them to you. Yep. Oh, by the way, this was, so these were, this was 150 for this bag. Perfect. And this bag was one, was half of 149, 75 cents. Perfect. So what I do is I take all of these, I take all the things, put it on a sheet, and then once I'm done listing, all the ones that I want to list, I divide it by the number, the cost. So I get right. an average cost of goods for these. Okay. Here's another Smurf. Okay. And I think I will pair it with that. It, it just depends. Is that a baby Kermit? Yeah, there's a Kermit in here, which I was pretty, <laughs> it's a vintage Kermit. So I was okay. pretty excited about that. Yeah. And then there's a Papa Smurf in here. Look at that. As well. Cool. So I tried to find all the Smurfs that I could. Okay. But, you know, some of the bags you can't see. Oh, and there's a Grinch. Ooh. And my Facebook group tells me anything Grinch is good. So okay. <laughs> we're going to try it. There's some Beanie Babies in here. Somebody was like, why do you hate Beanie Babies? I hate them because they're always in my junk bag <laughs> and they're not worth anything. I know there's exceptions. Of course, there's exceptions. Tell me all the exceptions. Okay, this junk bag I bought. Oh, here's some Beanie Boos, these little stackable ones. We've been doing pretty well with those, actually. Yeah. Don't ask me why. And the Tsum Tsums in here. Okay. And this little guy, Beanie Boo. Yeah. There's... And this little this little pug we've sold like a million times. Okay. So I know that we can make money off this, and, and I think there's a Smurf in here. Oh, and there's this. <laughs> I could just open these, but this I th I wanted to show you how I found them. Right. Also, I think this is a Disney. You know what? I gotta look. Okay. It's for you. <gasps> oh my God! What is that? I knew it. <laughs> this is the Disney you foofy Fo you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But this is little Snow White. Oh. I or something like that. One of those little princesses. Yeah. And this is exactly what I thought it was. Oh. I think I got a bunch of these little Sesame Streets. Oh wow. This is Grover. Grover. And so I got them because I think there's like a set. Mm. I'm telling you, we sell these things all the freaking time. I don't know what's going on right now with these. And then I also this. I knew this would. Oh, sell. is that a Sanrio? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something. It's an off character that could be potentially valuable. Yeah. So, and this is what a Tsum Tsum is if you've never seen one, but this is a mermaid one, so I think it'll do well. Oh, cool. Okay. There's like hair all over there. <laughs> I don't want to talk about what's over here. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is that a burrito? This is a turtle and a burrito. A pizza. A Hawaiian, oh, is that a Hawaiian pizza? Hawaiian pizza turtle. Oh, that's. That's. I don't even know anything, but I'm sure that that's going to be good, right? This is huge. <laughs> Tito's pizza, pizza, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's a pizza something. Okay. Okay, so that's why I bought that <laughs> one. Oh, oh, also, I think this is the main reason I bought it because I saw this. What is that? Uh huh. Wait till you see. Oh, that's a Disney. Something. Yes. It's Beauty and the Beast because there's more Beauty and the Beasts in all these bags. Okay. Okay, so then this one. Yo, I'm so excited about these. This one had a troll in it. Okay. We do really well with like... Oh, the old school troll. Uh-huh. Yeah. This isn't the old, old school, but still, we do like Y2K and we do well with trolls. Yep. There's a sock monkey in here. 
which we also do okay with. There's a Beanie Boo right there. Uh -huh. And also this one was $1.99, so it was a dollar total. There's an Aurora something right there. I don't know, we'll see. It's exciting here, you guys. This is all excitement all the time. This one, look, look, I had to. Oh my God. Look at that guy. Yeah, you can't not. I couldn't leave him there. That and then there's a... this like little rust bear that's on the telephone. Yeah. So this one was a dollar two for this guy. I, I saw this little bear. I love the vintage stuff. Y'all know this. Born to talk. Oh Stop my it. God. You got to be kidding me. I have to list this. <sighs> I have, I might want to keep this. I don't even, and it has a little telephone book with it. Okay, I saw that right away. I was like, that one's coming. Corn dog. Is that a Sonic corn dog plush? Okay. <laughs> I start to know all the Sonic and McDonald's plush from doing this junk bag thing. I hope you guys have thrift stores with junk bags because it's so fun. All right. Who is that? That's Fat Albert. Oh. I think. I could be wrong about that. Oh, there's another peep. Um. There's Finding Nemo. Why'd I get this one? I always have a reason for getting it. Oh, we've sold this before. Oh, with the bigger one. Yeah, we have we the bigger one. We just listed the bigger one. Yeah. So I got that. Oh, and then this Peeps, because we have the big Peeps. Right. As well. And I just listed, Revel just sold some small Peeps like that too. And this, I think this is an Angry Bird. Doesn't look like an Angry Bird. Oh, no, he doesn't look angry, does he? Mm-mm. Okay, anyway, I'll report back once I open these and tell you all the things that are in here. You got one more, right? I have two more. Two more, okay. This. Oh, there he is. Cogsworth. Yes. We learned about him. I tried to find all of the Beauty and the Beast. Y'all, there's, there's, there's so many Tsum Tsums yep. in here. So I'm hoping to, like, really hit the Tsum Tsum jackpot because sometimes they can be very good. Yep. I hope I got all the Beauty and the Beast. I think there's more junk bags outside, to be honest. Okay. You don't think so? I don't. This one had an owl squishmallow, which we do well with. Yep. In it. And normally we have to buy the squishmallows by themselves. This is, that, is something good, is but I don't... A, yeah, I don't know what that is. I know. Hmm? There's a little face <laughs> in there. This is Mrs. Pot or Chip. Yeah. There's Mrs. Potts was in one of these bags, too. I was, oh, here's another Squishmallow. Okay. So this bag was $2.99. Let's open her up. All right. You guys want to see. Yeah, get in there. You want to see. I know you do. So this is the Raccoon Squishmallow. I think this one's pretty good. Don't quote me because I can't remember. Is that a mushroom? This is, <clears throat> yes. This is Chip. Nice. From Beauty and the Beast. That's a uh, Rocket Raccoon from Guardians of the Galaxy, I think. Okay, so this is a nerd thing. This might be good. That looks like a wannabe jelly cat. It does. This is a Beanie Boo Owlette. The owls do okay. Mm, okay. So hopefully that does well. No, this is not, I don't think this, this feels like a Squishmallow, but I don't think it is. No, I don't think so. This one definitely is. Yep. And we've sold this one before. Uh, Texas Rangers. These stackables. I can sell we have them. that one. We've already, we listed that one yesterday. Of Mimi, right? I can't believe I know Stop. that. <laughs> yes. Mimi. Oh, you're getting good. But we literally just listed that last night. So. Yeah, but I listed it too. I drafted it. I don't remember it at all. This is a Tsum Tsum. This looks like the pig from, um, whatchamacallit. I don't know. This is a pig. Okay. <laughs> and this is a little dog. And this is a pineapple. We have a pineapple and a mushroom. Perfect. So... Okay, so right. I'm going to go through these. I also bought a bunch of computer games. These are not in a junk bag, but they're in the junk area because I think that they're going to be okay. They were all 25 cents. Ski resort. And Shawana was telling me that she was selling these things. I got some Lego thing. This was a dollar. Okay. I got another Lego thing that was a dollar. Perfect. Remember, these are half off. Yeah. Sorry, CD-ROM, which was like 12 and a half cents or whatever. Yep. Math. <laughs> Sims. Another Sims. Sims. Battleship for 12 okay. and a half cents. Okay. See, these are quick to list on days like today where we're super rushed. Yep. I can list I can list these whole, all of these in 20 minutes. Yep. Yahtzee. Can't See? leave the Yahtzee. Every time. I know. I have a thing with the Yahtzee. All right, so I'm going to go through these and see how much I can list out of this stuff and divide it and then list all of those things. And I think my average cost of goods will be 
nine, ten cents each probably. Perfect. And then we'll see how much money we make on them in the coming weeks. Yay! Okay. Okay. So we went through the junk. I wanted to do Amy's update corner with you because I have a new cleaning product. Okay. What do you got? So Stitch is really popular right now. This yes. little plush. And we found this one. And he mm -hmm. has the original Disney store tag on him. Very nice. But as you can see, he's white and vintage and he was filthy. Yes. So I tried my baby wipes. Fine. And it came cleaner. But then I used this Folex, which mm -hmm. I've been talking about, but I haven't really ever used it hardcore okay i use it hardcore all over this plush nice you do not have to rinse it it's a carpet spot remover interesting okay and i use it in combination with the baby wipes this thing came out pristine it's looking really good i just want to let you know all right okay so guys thank you all very much for hanging out with us again on the daily grind any questions leave them down below we would do our best to respond to every comment uh, i'm a little behind i'm working on it uh, and we'll see you guys in the live tonight. Bye. Thanks. Bye.